going to read about it in Government Zero. I have a whole chapter in here that describes this. George Soros, the best I could tell, funded the Arab Spring. Zbigniew Brzezinski wrote it up. I'm, I'm doing this in broad, broad strokes. Hillary Clinton acted it out. Do you know any of this? Are you aware that they created the greatest refugee crisis the world has seen since World War II? That there is a reason this happened? The Arab Spring did it? And it's their hands all over this? That's what these hearings should have been about. Unintended consequences. Chaos in Libya. Flight to Kurdistan. EU Home Affairs Commissioner Cecilia Malmström, another good Swede, Swedish liberal, says Europe must offer safe and legal routes to asylum seekers. Rise of ISIS. On and on it goes. Pre President Barack Obama with his false war against ISIS. He's gotten away with that. Over a year and a half and he hasn't destroyed them? What a commander-in-chief he is. This guy couldn't lead a Boy Scout troop through, a, through a, a forest in New Jersey. A year and a half with the most powerful military on earth, and it took Russia to come in to do any damage at all to ISIS? Battle of Kobani. 400,000 Syrian Kurds flee to Turkey. Italy uh, ends Mary Nostrum. 800 migrants die on April 19th. Hungary is overrun. No, should I talk about Merkel? Merkel, who was invading her own nation? A madwoman. A madwoman invading Germany with people who will never adapt. Says her nation will offer temporary asylum to Syrian refugees. Temporary asylum. And what is she going to do when Syria is stabilized by Russia? Is she going to deport them? Or she'll say that that's illiberal of her. 630,000 illegal border crossings into Europe by October of this year, that's what's known, 630,000. That is the background for these hearings. And yet, not one of these congressmen brought this up during the Benghazi hearing. So I find it very suspicious that they have not done so. And as I said to you, it means that there's, there's something going on between the parties. They worked something out here. Something's wrong with the picture. And they're covering up the entire refugee crisis, which is intimately tied in with the Benghazi hearings. Yet it hasn't come up yet. So, look, I'll take some callers on this. I'll give away copies of Government Zero, which I'm going to do all of next week when the book hits the bookshelves on Tuesday. Those of you who are loyalists and want to send the message to the government media complex, I know we're going to go out and buy multiple copies. I don't even have to ask you again. I'm not concerned about it. But I'm going to tell you that this uh, is a big deal. This uh, Benghazi thing is not going where it should go. It should have been about the European, uh, the, the Muslim refugee crisis, or they call it Europe's refugee crisis. It's really not Europe's refugee crisis. It's all tied into Benghazi. How is she doing is what I asked you. Is she winning or losing? David on WABC, what's your opinion? Is she winning or losing during these hearings? I believe it's a draw. I'm watching the testimony. I don't think she's a winner. I think she comes out shady, sly, conniving, not genuine, fishy, any type of word you want to use. She's definitely not a winner. The Republicans definitely could have done, like you said, quick pointed questions that, you know, nail it. They didn't do that. If, you know, people don't have attention span for their long, long, uh, multiple parts of their questions, you know, just to paint her in a certain picture. We know she didn't care, whatever it is. But I do believe that the one, the one positive, hopefully, if Donald Trump decides just to send out one tweet with one pointed question, I have more influence than all the testimony. Okay, so what would that tweet be? Question you just poised right now before about the refugees makes the correlation. That will do more. So you're saying, well, so my tweet is more important than Donald Trump's tweet right now. He, uses your I mean, he has a bigger audience. But but what would that tweet be? Tell me what it is. I'll put it up on my own Twitter account. Go ahead. Tell it to me. How her Libya screw up enables the Arab Spring, all that screw up, enable the refugee crisis. Right. In other words, okay, so I'm going to put that up on Facebook and Twitter the minute I go to break. I'll be right back. Hold it. Send them a copy of Government Zero. You win the prize. Be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. So as the last segment came to conclusion, a caller said he would have asked the one question that nobody asked yet today at this hearing. And that is, Madam Secretary, are you aware that your Arab Spring idea has led to the greatest refugee crisis in the history of Europe? And go, and go quiet. Don't sit there and, and, and grandstand. Now, there are questions that were asked that were valid, but I, I don't think people care that much about the, lip, the Benghazi thing per se. I think they should have broadened it. See, here's the problem. The hearings have been planned for 17 months, and the guys who put this together are still functioning in the past. There's not one question about Arab Spring Libya refugee crisis. Remember, the route from Africa runs from Libya to Europe. By overthrowing Gaddafi, they opened up the doors to the African migrants that are pouring into Europe, in that case. Fingerprints of Soros and Hillary Clinton are all over that. Why has that not come up? Arab Spring, Arab Spring, Arab Spring, Arab Spring. No one's mentioned it once, have they? Ha anyone listening to this show tell me, have you heard one question asked of Hillary Clinton about her Arab Spring concept? There was a hint a around it, near it. Where she said, uh, yeah, well, it, they had the first free election in history, and we love the election, and we love democracy. Nonsense, like a child answering a question. They should have said, excuse me, but what about the refugee crisis that it caused? But they didn't do it. Because I think they're all in on the same game here, frankly. It's very depressing. If you want to know the truth, it's, it's nothing. It's smoke and mirrors is what it comes down to. There's nothing here. I mean, they, they ask questions, unanswered questions. Why was the U.S. in Libya to begin with? Why were security requests denied? Why was the military not ready to respond quickly on the 11th anniversary of 9-11? Why did the Obama administration change his story about the nature of the attacks in the weeks afterwards? I, I don't think she, they got the answer out of her. She addressed some of these questions early on, and she gave the standard answer that she's always given. The world is a dangerous place. Perfect security can never be achieved. She mentioned Beirut, where more Americans were killed. And then she said, we want to make sure this doesn't happen again. That's the standard government answer. Yes, we're sorry it happened. And we're trying to study it and find out how to make sure it never happens again. No one ever loses their job. Can you imagine if you worked for a company and you did something like this? Would you lose your job? Sure you'd lose your job. Not in the government. Not in the government. Meanwhile, in other news of the day, uh, Iowa poll, Ben Carson surges past Donald Trump in latest Iowa poll. Now, I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that because Iowa is a very odd place. I don't even know if I have an affiliate in Iowa. I hope I do. I know I do. I'm joking. But the fact is, is that Iowa is not America. Iowa is a very interesting small sliver of America. And I wouldn't overemphasize the surge of Ben Carson in one little poll in in one state i wouldn't put too much stock in that and we'll have donald trump on the show in the near future i'm sure and we'll talk again with donald and uh i hope he's in it for the long haul i hope that um they keep him up they stays up there can has the stamina for it and he wins the, the nomination and that it's him versus hillary because that'll be a real contest and i'm not sure of the outcome by the way i know it'll be a real contest any other republican it won't be a real contest because she's got the machine behind her, much more powerful than any of the other candidates on the Republican side. If Trump's the Republican nominee, and it's Trump versus Hillary Clinton, it'll be a real battle royale. And after watching her today, I think it's going to be a very close call as to who wins. She is the smoothest liar I have ever seen in my whole life, which gives her the number one qualification for being the office holder of the highest position in the land. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Hey. 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation. I've watched these hearings all morning, and I uh, tweeted this today. Proves that she has the number one qualification to be president. She can lie with a straight face, can lie better than anyone on the planet, and keep the cat that ate the cream smile. I've never seen anything like this. She's out of communist China. She is such a skilled liar and rhetorician that she's suitable for the presidency of the United States post-Obama. She is perfect for the position. She can lie better than anyone. She doesn't lose her composure. And she is absolutely chilling in her delivery. She's like the Gang of Five under uh, in China, post Mao Zedong. In, in fact, you should know this. Uh, it didn't come up today, and it's an obscure point. The Chinese communists noted five or so years ago that Hillary Clinton was such a skilled liar as a politician, or they called her a deliverer, that they sent members of the Communist Party of China to study her delivery here in the United States of America. I believe you can research that fact and find it. She is right out of the communist playbook. She cannot be moved. And I would ask you today, if you've watched the hearings, here's a question for you. Do you think Hillary looks better or worse today? Do you think Hillary is winning or losing today? Because that's all that matters. The truth doesn't matter. The truth is gone. The truth is dead with Ambassador Stevens. We know what she did. We know that she paid no attention to him and the Marines who were guarding him. We know that he was whacked because he was moving weapons from Libya, meaning Gaddafi's stockpile to Syria, to give to the anti-Assad forces. That's not well documented, but it's documented well enough for people to conclude that that's exactly why Stevens was let to die. Now, I have another revelation for you on the show, which is this. I have the names of all the generals and admirals who were fired by Obama right after the uh, disaster in Benghazi. I have all their names, and I am surprised that they were not called today, because none of them are in the military, to testify that they were ready, willing, and able to send aid and support to save Ambassador Stevens and those CIA and other contractors who were protecting him. They were fired right after Benghazi, and I figured out why. I discussed it in my last book, Stop the Coming Civil War. For those of you who have the book, you can research it. Their names are in there. But I go farther in Government Zero, and I'm not going to talk about the book. I'm going to be talking about Hillary Clinton's capacity for getting away with virtual murder and why she will be the most dangerous president of all, far worse than Barack Obama. If you think that Obama is bad, and bad is he, wait until you see what she's going to do. This hearing is far more important than you may imagine. I will say this. If I were running these hearings... I would run it like a, a Hollywood film. And I would, in the afternoon today of these hearings, bring in a surprise witness that would blow the hearing apart. It would bring her down. She'd be finished. And that surprise witness would have a name. I wouldn't say in general. It would be General Carter Ham of the U.S. Army. It would be Rear Admiral Charles Gouet, commander of Carrier Strike Group 3, who was fired by Obama right after Benghazi. It would be Carter Ham, who was the head of the United States African Command during the bloodshed in Benghazi, Libya, when Stevens and others were killed by Muslims. General Ham was extremely critical of Barack Obama because Obama would not let him send reinforcements to help the U.S. citizens under attack in Benghazi. He was then fired in April 2013. I have all the names of all the surprise witnesses who I would have brought to testify today as to why they were told or who told them and when they were told not to send reinforcements and who fired them. You're not going to hear any of these men. I believe they don't want to take a walk in Marcy Park. They don't want to wind up floating in a river in Washington. Many of you don't know who Sidney Blumenthal is. He's an all-around serpent. Sidney Blumenthal is a former failed reporter who went to work for the Clinton hit machine Sidney Blumenthal worked with Media Matters to destroy anyone on the conservative side. But worse than that, let's forget that he's just a political operative of the lowest kind. Blumenthal had business plans for Libya post Gaddafi that will blow you off the planet. When you find out what Sidney Blumenthal's private business interests in Libya 
uh, were to have been. They, these are bombshell revelations by the House Benghazi Committee Chairman R Representative Trey Gowdy today. You're not going to believe what those business interests were. And then you have to ask yourself, was Hillary going to benefit from these private business interests?